Welcome to EDAB video number nine, Data Analysis and Business Intelligence Made Easy with Excel Power Tools. E except we're not using Excel. We're going to use Power BI Desktop. Now, the good news is everything we learned in last video over in Excel Power Pivot, it's virtually identical over here in Power BI Desktop. And the big benefit of jumping over to Power BI Desktop is that it has interactive visualizations. And here's what I mean by interactive. If I click on the map on the United States, instantly the other elements in our report update. Click off to the side, back to not filtered. If I switch from competition to beginner, and I want to look at what happens in May 2016, June, all the way to December, no problem in Power BI Desktop. You can download the files for this video in the link below the video. When you download this zip folder, right click, extract all. These are all the files that you need to follow along. Inside this folder is all the data we need to import into Power BI Desktop. There's the PDF notes with written summaries from the video, even a few homework problems. Now here are the topics for our video, and be sure to look below each video. Now this is Excel Basics 1, but below our video, if you look for that Show More button and click, there's a time hyperlink, Table of Contents. If you like what you see, click that Subscribe button and the bell icon. Now here's the overview of what we'll do in this video. We'll first have to download Power BI Desktop, which is a free download from Microsoft. And we'll look at the links in just a moment. Then we're going to have a lot of data coming from different Excel workbooks. So we'll have to point Power Query, which is inside of Power BI Desktop, to a folder. But unlike earlier in the class when we imported from text files, in this video we'll get to see how to import data from lots of different Excel files. Then we'll do our data modeling. Import the tables, relationships, hide the columns, and DAX measures. And then we'll build our final visualizations. Now how do you choose between Excel Power Pivot and Power BI Desktop? Well, guess what? Both of them have Power Query, columnar database for our big data, relationships, DAX formulas. Both are almost identical. Now, you might want to stick with Power Pivot if you're familiar with Excel. If a pivot table report is what you want, you might want to go with Power BI Desktop because it has more varied visualizations and reports. And the visualizations and reports are interactive. Now, in Excel Power Pivot, we can publish the Excel files but they're harder to share on any device, not with Power BI Desktop. Next video, we'll see how to publish. And with Power BI Desktop, whatever report you create can be consumed on any device. Now, Excel Power Pivot does not have DAX table functions. In this video, we'll see a table DAX formula that can be used as part of the data model. And here's a drawback. DAX formulas calculate more slowly in Excel, but over in Power BI Desktop, Calculate more quickly in Power BI. Now, this only comes into play when you have very big data. But if you're working in Excel and things are slowing down too much, as we'll see next video, you can actually send the data model over to Power BI Desktop and see if that works faster. I switch from Excel Power Pivot to Power BI Desktop when I want visualizations in Power BI rather than a pivot table. I want interactivity between the visualizations and reports, or I have too much data and I need faster calculation times over in Power BI. Approximate history of Power BI Desktop. In Excel in 2009, that was the first Power Pivot add-in. That's where we had our first glance of the columnar database, DAX formulas, relationships, and the data model. Power Query was debuted in 2013. Then all of these Power Tools were refined in Excel between 2009 and 2015. And then in 2015, Microsoft combined all these tools together and gave it away for free called Power BI Desktop. Now, there's different versions of Power BI. Here's the Microsoft website that describes each one of the versions. Power BI Desktop, Power BI Pro, and Power BI Premium. Now, we're going to use the Power BI Desktop. 
this is where we connect to multiple sources clean and transform our data, do our DAX formulas, and build our dashboards. But in terms of publishing with the free version, we can publish to the PowerBI.com website. And there's some great services once we publish it, like printing, creating PowerPoint slides, and even creating the embed code that we can use in our own website that's viewable to the public. But what the free version is missing is when we publish it to PowerBI.com, it's not like the pro version where we can publish it and have others view it on any device. Also, when we publish it here, if you don't want to publish it to PowerBI.com, but you want to keep it on premises, then you want the premium version. Now, we are going to try the 60-day free trial because we want to see how amazing it is to publish our PowerBI.com reports and view it on any device. But if you only have the free version, well, guess what? We can still share two different ways. We can do it the old-fashioned way. Simply email the .pbix file, and then the person can simply download the free version and view it. And of course, you can use the embed code option. Now, downloading Power BI Desktop. Guess what? There's two different ways we can download it. Microsoft Download Page and Microsoft Windows Store. But here's the deal. I've been downloading for the last few years from Microsoft Download Page. And that means every month when they update it, I have to go and re-download and reinstall it. If, however, you use the Microsoft Windows Store link to download, then you get automatic updates each month. After you download Power BI Desktop and open up a blank file, you'll see this. Because Power BI Desktop updates each month, this is really handy. Click this and go see the latest updates. I'm going to close this. Up in the title bar, Untitled is not a good name. I'm going to use the keyboard F12. That opens up the Save As dialog box. I'm going to name it something smart. And notice .pbix. That's the file extension. Let's click Save. Now, everything is going to be in a different place and look different over here in Power BI Desktop compared to Excel Power Pivot. But internally, almost everything is the same. So for example, instead of the Get and Transform group over in Excel, Power Query is in the external data. There's our Get Data, where we can connect to different data sources. Over here on the left, if we hover, we can see Report Data Model. This report area, this is a blank canvas. Over here, we can see visualizations. We'll use those later. Now, this white area here is like an Excel worksheet. It doesn't have cells, but down here, we can see there's a tab. And this is where we'll build our reports and visualizations. We can have different tabs with different visualizations on each tab. In Power BI Desktop, each tab is called a tab. All the tabs together are called a report. Now, we don't have in the data group any tables. But this is where we'll see our tables. This is where we'll build our relationships. So step one, we got to go and get our data. Doesn't matter which area we start from. This is eventually where the tables are going to land. So here's external data. Come up to get data. Well, we have lots of Excel files in a folder. But wait a second, I don't see folder. Down here, more. Now I'm going to click more. There's the folder option. But before we jump in, let's go look at our data. Here are the Excel files. Let's open up 2014. On the sheet 2014, we have a proper data set with our field names in the first row. Now Control down arrow. Wow, almost 90,000 rows of data. Control Home. Now this is an Excel file. This is not going to be like when we imported text files from a folder earlier in the class. Inside an Excel workbook file, we can have many different objects. Now for us, we have control over our data. We know that in every single Excel file, there's exactly one object. That means there's one sheet. Each sheet has a proper data set. Now we're going to close this and go back to Power Query. Back here in Power Query in Power BI Desktop, Folder, Connect, Browse. 
we're pointing Power Query to this folder. It will import every file it finds. Click OK. Click OK. Click Edit. Not Load or Combine. Edit. Now this is the Power Query Editor over here in Power BI Desktop. Step one, let's name this. F Transactions and Enter. Now just like with our text files earlier in the class, when we use From Folder, it gives us a list of every single file. Clicking off to the side, not on binary, in this content column, I look down here, there's an Excel file. There's an Excel file. Now we want to remove all the columns except for content. So right click Content, Remove Other Columns. And what we do not want to do is click that Combine button. These are Excel files. And because there can be many potential objects, that button is not going to work for us. We're actually going to have to add an extra column and use the Excel.Workbook function. So we go up to Add Column, Custom Column. We're going to call this column something like Get Excel Data. Down in the custom formula, this is the first time we're going to use a Power Query function. Excel.Workbook, open parentheses. Now, Power Query functions are case sensitive. You have to have capital E and a W and the rest lowercase. Now, remember this content column has Excel files. And what Excel.Workbook will do is it will, from each row, get all of the objects in each Excel file. So I'm going to double click Content. Now because we have proper data sets and we want to promote headers, that means over in that Excel file, the first row were field names. So in the second argument of Excel.Workbook, comma, we have to type lowercase true. That tells Excel.Workbook when it gets one of the tables to promote headers close parentheses, and that will work. Click OK. Now I can click off to the side. And down here, this is a table that lists every single object that it finds in the Excel file. For us, our pattern is always the same. We have exactly one sheet. Now we need to expand and list all of the objects, one on top of each other, before we get to our final proper data sets. I do not need content. Right click, Remove. Now I can use the Expand button. Click, uncheck Use Original. These are all the columns. Click OK. Now in the Data column, if I click off to the side, there's my proper data set. That's the next proper data set. Now we don't have to do any filtering on any of these other columns, again, because we know that each Excel workbook has one object, the Excel sheet with the proper data set. Now I could delete these and leave this column here, but watch this. I'm going to double click this to open this back up, because really in this case, when we're sure about one sheet in each Excel workbook, all I need to accept is the data column. Now I click OK. Now we can see our proper data sets. Now we can use this Expand button. Click. I definitely want all of the columns. Click OK. And there, from all of those Excel files, we have appended or combined one on top of each other to get a single proper data set. Now we definitely need to go through and verify the names and the data types. Click the icon for data type, date, text, decimal, decimal, text. And units are going to be whole number. Now this is amazing. There's our query. There's our resultant table we're about to load or apply to the data model. There's all of our steps. Now we come back over to Home. And this is a difference as compared to Power Query in Excel. We can simply click Close and Apply. The Close means close this window. Apply means deliver this proper data set to the columnar database in Power BI Desktop's data model. So I click Close and Apply. It's working to get all of the data from each one of the Excel files. After the query has loaded, over here in Data or Table, we can see our table. Over on the right, we can see F Transactions and the columns. If we ever need to edit that query, we have to go back up to Edit Queries. This opens up the Power Query Editor. I'm going to close this. If we go look at Relationship View, we have one table. Now we have two other tables we need to import. 
Another one of the files you're supposed to download is this one. If we open it, we need to import the country table and the product table. Now we'll use Power Query to look inside of this Excel file and choose just those two objects. Back in Power BI Desktop, Get Data, Excel File. Click, select the file, click Open. In the Navigator window, we will select D Country and D Product. Those are the only two objects that we want to import. Now we click Edit. Over on the left, we now have three different queries. Select D Country, verify names and data type. These are the steps. That name is fine. D Product. We're verifying data types and names. The steps are fine. Now I can click Close and Apply, and, and these two new tables will be loaded to the data model. Click Close and Apply. Now look at this. When they were imported over here in Power BI Desktop, it sensed the relationship and built it automatically. But we want to verify that the relationship is pointing to the correct columns, and they are. Our next task is to create the date table or calendar table. Now last video, we saw that Power Pivot had an automatic button to do that. And that automatic button over in Excel looked through the date column in F Transactions and automatically extracted the correct number of days. We don't have an automatic date table over here in Power BI Desktop. But we can go over to Tables, over to Modeling, and there's a new DAX Table button. I'm going to click New Table. Up in the Formula bar. I'm going to call this ddate equal, and they named this function smartly calendar tab. It just needs the start date and the end date. Well, we have to look through the entire F transaction date column and find the min date. F transactions, down arrow to date tab, close parentheses. Now, that's not quite what we want, because if the date is not the first of the year, we need to change it. The way a date table works is that first column has to have every single possible day from every single possible year in the fact table. So I want to use the date function to construct the correct first date in the year. So we're going to use the date function. We need the year of the min date. So I type year. Close parentheses. Now comma. Well, the month is always going to be 1. Comma. The day, well, January 1st, so I put a 1. Close parentheses. So with that construction right there, we have created a DAX formula that will always look through the F transaction and find the first day of the year for the minimum date in the transaction table. Now I'm going to copy this, come to the end, comma, Control V, because now we don't want min. We want to look through the F transaction and get the max date. But then the month is 12, and the day is 31. All right, now I'm going to hit Enter. Select the column. Data type, I'm going to say, please, data type, date. I could also add some formatting. I'll select this one, click. So what we did here is we actually created a table using a DAX table function, and it was added to the data model. Over here, we can see D date table, date column. Over in our relationships, there's our date table. Now we can create a relationship, and then we'll create our attribute columns. I'm going to click and drag over to F Transactions. So we have one to many date relationship. Now we'll go back over to Table or Data View. And in the Modeling Ribbon tab, Calculation Group, these are our three options. Over in Power Pivot, we can create measures and calculate the columns. But in Power Pivot, they don't have this button. But over here in Power BI Desktop, we have all three. Now last video, the automatic date table feature added the columns. We're going to have to manually create those. So I'm going to click on New Column. Up in the Formula bar, let's type month number equal, and then the month function. DD, down arrow to the Date column, Tab. Close parentheses and Enter. New column. We'll call this month. And we would like to use the text function like over in Excel, but that function doesn't exist in DAX. To create month name, it's called Format. It works exactly the same way. DD will get our Date tab. That's the value. The row context for each row in this table will see the particular date, comma, format. 
In double quotes, the custom number formatting MMM will show Jan, Feb, Mar, and so on. End double quote, close parentheses, and enter. Now, just to show you, we didn't get to see this last video, but we know we have to sort month using this button here by month number. But let's go over to Report View. And here's our date table. Let's just drag month into the white blank area and drop. It defaults to the visualization table. Uh-oh, that's not going to work at all. It's sorting alphabetically. So we come back over to Data or Table View, click on Month, Sort by Column, and I want to select Month Number. That way, 1 to 12 will automatically sort January to December correctly. Month Number. Back over to Report View. That's much more polite. Back over to Data View. New column. And we'll create year. DD, down arrow, there's our date tab. Close parentheses and enter. Now we could create lots of other attributes, including fiscal year, fiscal quarter, and things like that. And I have other videos in my Excel series and the MSPTDA Advanced Data Analysis series that shows how to do that. But for us, this date table, unique list with all the dates and our attribute columns is what we need for our data model. We go over to Relationship View. That is looking good. Now we need to create measures for total revenue, total cost of goods sold, total gross profit, and total units. I'm going to go over to Data or Table View, select my F Transaction Table. Up in Modeling, Calculations, now we click New Measure. Just as we did last video, Total Revenue, and watch this. For the calculated column we just created in our date table, the assignment operator was equal sign. That's the same in Power Pivot. A calculated column uses an equal sign. But a measure over in Excel Power Pivot requires a colon and an equal sign, but not over here in Power BI Desktop. All of our formulas just require an equal sign. Now we're going to have to use some x. That's our iterator. Instead of adding an extra column like we did last video in Power Pivot for line item revenue, I want to do it all in one measure. Because I want to calculate the line item revenue for every row in the F transaction table, in the first argument of our SUMX iterator, we type F transactions, tab, comma, expressions. That's our whole formula. Now we are going to need to round each line item revenue. So I use the round function. In the number argument of round, I need to take price from the D product table. That means we're looking it up, multiply it by number of units, and then 1 minus the revenue discount. Our exact match lookup function in DAX is called related. Because there's a relationship, I just tell my formula which column in the lookup table has the thing I want to go and get. So retail price, close parentheses. For every line, in the F transaction table, even though we're in a measure inside an iterator, that related could see the row context for every single row in that table and always look up the correct price. Now I multiply times F transactions. There's our units. Times in parentheses 1 minus F transactions and the actual number of pennies of discount assigned to each line. We take that and subtract it from 1, and that will give us the net amount of our revenue. Now, number has our full calculation for our revenue, comma. We're rounding to the penny, so I put a 2. Close parentheses. That's the full expression that will calculate for every row in F transaction. And then the sum part will add every single one of those values. Come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. Now, this is different than Excel Power Pivot. In Excel Power Pivot, we build the measure in the measure grid, and we can see the result. If we look over here in F Transactions, that's the icon that means this is a measure. We still need to add some number formatting. So I'm going to add some number formatting. What I like to do is go over to Report View, and we want to come over and create a multi-row card. This will be like our substitute for the measure grid. We'll check total revenue, and it appears in the card. 
That's without any filter context. That's just the grand overall total. Now let's go back over to data or table view. I make sure that my F transaction table is selected. Click on total revenue, highlight formula, control C, escape. Now I'm going to click new measure, control V, total cost of goods sold. And we need to change two things. I don't need retail price. I type in S for standard cost. So I'm looking up standard cost instead of the retail price. And then I can delete all that. F transactions. And we want net cost equivalent. And that's our formula for total cost of goods sold. Now, maybe it's faster that you just type it out. But copying, pasting, and changing a few things usually works faster for me. Enter. And look at that. I have a rogue parentheses and a little red squiggly. It's like spell check over in Word. Backspace and Enter. Now let's add some number formatting. Go over to Report View. Click on our card. And I'm going to check Total Cost of Goods Sold. And there it is. Back over to Data Table View. Make sure we have F Transactions, New Measure. Total Gross Profit, Equal Sign. And our convention for using measures and other measures is we use a square bracket. So you type a square bracket. And internally, it knows that that's the convention. So it gives you a list of just the measures. Total revenue tab, minus square bracket, up arrow, tab, enter. Number formatting. Over to report view. There's my total gross profit. I check, and there it is. Back over to data table view, F transactions, new measure. Total units, and I'm going to sum from the F transaction, the units column. Close parentheses and Enter. I'm going to use 1,000 separator with zero decimals. Over to Report View, we'll check total units. And there are our DAX measures. If we go look at Relationship View, we imported table, created relationships. We have some measures. I need to hide some columns now. Country code all the way to units. Notice we do not want people dragging units from the field list over in report view because that would create an implicit measure. If we want a calculation, we explicitly create a measure. So I'm going to hide all of these columns. Hold Shift, click, right click. And over here, it's not hide from client tool. It's hide in report view. Retail price, standard cost, right click, hide in report. Country code, hide in report. Month number, hide in report. And there we have finished our data modeling. Now let's go over and create our reports. Report view, I'm going to double click here and type tests, enter. Come down here, add a new sheet. We'll call this gross profit analysis. Click the plus, double click. We'll call that one units analysis and enter. Back to gross profit. On this page, we want to analyze gross profit by year and month product, and by country. Now, in our first visualization, I want a cross-tabulated table that has month and year and then gross profit. The visualization for that is the matrix. So I'm going to click the matrix. We can move it around. And sometimes it's tricky. You want to usually point to the outside edge. And we don't have the same move cursor as we do in Excel and Word. I just see my diagonal white arrow, and I can click and drag. Now from D date, we're going to drag month over to rows. And I see my months. Now we want year in column. There's the year. F transactions. Notice over here in report view, all I see is the icon for my measures. I can check gross profit, and it throws it down to the values. Now we can resize it. And for each visualization that we create, if we look over here, this is fields. This is where we drag and drop the fields, kind of like a pivot table. But unlike a pivot table where you select different elements and then format, over here in Power BI Desktop, that paint roller is the format area. I click. And here's all of the different sections or parts of that visualization that we can format. For example, I could go to Grid. 
come down to text size 8. I'm going to increase it to 9. At any time, you can come and format whichever element. Now, in this visualization, this is different than Excel. If I select May 2015, it highlights it just as if it was a cross-tab conditional formatting. If I select the full year, I can see the full year. Off to the side, and it shows everything. All right, our next visualization, and if I mistakenly keep the first visualization selected and select bar, it will convert that one to a bar. That's not what I want, so Control-Z, make sure and click in the white, then come over and select our bar. And this is going to be our product. So from D product, I want product in axis. And then total gross profit, I'm going to check. And there we have our bars. Resize. So if this visualization is selected, I can come over to the paint roller. I want data label, so I'm going to click on. Notice this shows up in millions. Same with our axis down here. We had to do custom formatting over in Excel. Now, I actually want to change these because if I select 2015 and this other visualization, well, that's amazing. It totally filters the bar chart. But I don't want these zero millions over here. Deselect everything. Make sure bar is selected. Then in data labels, I click Expand. And under Units, I'm going to try thousands. Now if I come over to 2015, that's looking better. Select off to the side. Now I'm going to click in the white, and we want country. And the visualization we're going to use is Map. And there it is in D country. We only have country. I'm going to click. And then over in Total Gross Profit, check. Total Gross Profit by Country. Now if I click United States, look at that. It's highlighting just the certain amount within the context of the full product column height. Now this gets even cooler because we actually have a choice. Do we want it to highlight like this, or do I just want to see the actual filtered columns? And the way we do that is we select the visualization up to Format, and we click Edit Interactions. Because the map is selected, I can choose for the other visualizations how I want to click in the map to affect the other visualizations. Now, currently, it's Highlight. But if I change it to Filter, then it actually shows me the filtered column. Down here, Brazil. This is another big boomerang country. World Championships were there a few years ago. There we go. Down to Australia. You'd think Australia would be bigger for boomerang sales. But there we go. So you choose Filter or Highlight. Up here for this cross tab, we can either have it filtered or we cannot have it filtered. That would show the grand totals all the time. I'm going to choose Filter. And you can select each visualization and choose how you want it to interact with the other visualizations. Now I'm going to select the map, come over to Format, down to Title, scroll down, and increase text size to 11. Same with our bar. And you could add some other formatting if you'd like. All right, the visualizations on this tab are done. Let's go over to Units Analysis. All right, we want a line chart that shows units by products over the years and months. So we come over. There's our visualization line chart. Now, I want to have along the horizontal axis year and month. And there is a feature inside of Power Pivot and in Power BI Desktop that makes it convenient when you have multiple fields you want to drag and drop. Now, over in Power Pivot, you have to highlight both year and month, and then right click, Create Hierarchy. Now, over here in Power BI Desktop, it's a totally different method for creating a hierarchy. Watch this. You click and drag month, and you simply drag it on top of year. And when you see that dotted yellow line, you let go. Now, I remember the first time I did that by accident, I was like, what? But that's how you do it over here in Power BI Desktop. All right, so now we can simply drag our hierarchy and drop it in axis. Now we want product over in the legend. And there's our total gross profit. I'm going to check. Now the legend's at the top, so I'm going to come over to Format, Legend, and let's put it on the left. Click in the white. We want a slicer. Check Category. Resize it. Move it. 
So competition. Whoa, we have gross profit. I don't want that. I'm going to select the line chart. Uncheck, let's select total units. That's much better. And look at this. Here's a great feature. We can hover at any year point. That tells us the year totals for each one of those products that belong to the competition group. I can click the eraser. In the upper right-hand corner of our chart, we have some interesting buttons for our hierarchy. Go to the next level. If I click, that will show me, for example, all of the Octobers for all of the years. There's the total. Drill back up. Expand all down. When I click this, that shows me year and month. I can hover at any point and see the totals. There's also drill down if I select this. Or I don't have it selected. When I select on a particular month and year, it just highlights. Click off to the side. But if I have drill down on, now I can, when I start at the top, drill down by clicking in the chart. Those are the unit totals for products for the single month October 2017. I can come over and select my slicer. The competition group, I can see up in the legend, there are the October 2017 totals. That is a pretty amazing interactive chart. And that was a pretty epic introduction to Power BI Desktop. We saw how to create various interactive visualizations. We saw how to drag and drop fields. We saw how to use the paint roller to add formatting. This was our unit analysis over on gross profit. We also, in modeling, saw how to use DAX formulas, table, column, and measures. Over in relationships, we saw how to create our relationships, hide columns. And back over in home, if we ever need to get back and edit our Power Query, there it is right there. Click, and there's our Power Query editor. Now, next video, we will see how to use this button right here where we can publish and then view our Power BI reports online and share on different devices. We'll also see how to share a Power Pivot report to PowerBI.com. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next EDAB 10.